you, you, you work with people like Porsche. Porsches are great. <laughs> but, you, but you actually don't have one. I, I want. So uh, there's so many cars I want. OK, yeah, yeah. But so until recently, I, until like two years ago, I didn't have a car. OK. I just, just a, had a the, the green car. The green BMW in pieces from years ago. And I had an Audi A8 old one for, um, as a business car. And that was it? That was it. I, everything was in the company. We were barely surviving. I didn't yeah. have money to buy cars. Yeah. Then I had a little bit of money, so I bought the Z4 and, uh, and the Panigale. And the Duke. In, you, know, you know Pebble Beach event? Yeah. They sell classic cars there. Yeah. And one fascinating thing they told me there, which I didn't think about, so they sold like a billion worth of cars every year. And yeah. it went down year after year. And I was like, why? And then they explained me, because the people are dying. So, so why? OK, there's new people coming. But people are buying cars that turn them on and that they had on their walls when they were kids or very young. Yes. So they don't care about older cars. No. It's the same thing with me. I wouldn't buy a pre-war car, never, no matter how much money I had. Yeah, because so, it doesn't resonate with you. Yeah, yeah. I have no emotional connection to it. But this but car, this. I was so obsessed with it when it came out. How old were you when this came out? Uh, I don't know, probably 18. Yeah. So this was what, 2004? I was just about to say, I think you were absolutely right. I think it was 2004. Yeah, so something yeah. like that. I was obsessed with that car, and I loved the S54 engine in it. The yeah. six-cylinder, the, the iconic uh, you know, E46 M3 yeah. engine. So I always wanted to have this uh, engine or, or the E60, uh, E46 um, uh, M3. Uh, a guy who, <laughs> again, time, I, I didn't have time to look for cars, so a guy who was just uh, next door to, to the company, he had this car, and I just bought it. Like, I mean, it looks immaculate. Oh, this is beautiful, especially with the wheels. It looks absolutely, yeah, it does. It looks amazing. It's beautiful. It's, it's a great car. I love it. So um, this is the thing that interests me about you. Your job is electric hypercars and high voltage. Yeah. But you're... But I'm making the high voltage cars that I like. I, yeah. I, I never said I'm, a, uh, I'm an environmentalist. You never said you're an eco-warrior. Yeah. I, I am on different things where it makes sense based on data. I think that eating less meat I don't eat meat, yes. uh, and you don't as well, is yeah. much more impactful to the environment than what you drive. I mean, of course, having many cars like this, it generates lots of emissions when you, when you build a car. But uh, yeah. in terms of operating the car, it, like eating less meat is yeah. incomparable in terms of impact. When was the turning point in, in RIMAC where you suddenly kind of went into the big world? You were considered to be serious the first turning point was when we started to work but, but it was very gradual to start work for the big companies yeah the second one was porsche uh, but the third one was really when after six or seven years i didn't have to worry about salary anymore you have no idea on how many doors i i knocked and how many incredible situations i had where i thought like somebody's going to take my kidney out because i was meeting with everybody who gave me a slim chance of getting some money for the company of of investing in a company. Yeah. I had situations where I was very close to call the police and like run for my life and stuff like that. Really? Uh, yeah, cr crazy stuff. I was struggling to, to keep the company alive. I was struggling to keep the, the payroll, the, the, to pay the rent and you know, suppliers calling me every day, threatening. Yeah. And then somebody tells me they might have an investor and I need to fly to Spain, well not Barcelona, but uh, yeah, anyways. And uh, it was a scam. He was wanted, it? Yeah, absolutely. And how are you regarded in, in your home country? How are you regarded here? Is, are, you, are you quite, are you, a, are you a celebrity? I mean, hang on, you, I think you're more famous than Goran Ivanisevic now, aren't you? you got well, everybody be. knows about us and, you know, like walking down the street, which I don't do often, I'm in the company all the time, you know, people recognize me and want to take photos and so on. Yeah. But there's also a huge, incredible, unbelievable amount of hate. Is there? Oh yeah, you wouldn't believe it. Um, because. Uh, people think that it's all fake, like how can this be, like it sounds too good to be true, it cannot be, like why are they doing all these secret projects for OEMs, why can't they just say what they're doing for car companies? What, like your money laundering or something? Yeah, like your money laundering for Porsche, your money laundering for, for uh, Mercedes what, uh, or Hyundai, whatever, like crazy things like that, because there's still a communist mindset where like if somebody's successful, it's not 
because they are creating something, but it's just taken from somebody else. Mm -hmm. And like people think we get lots of government money and stuff like that, which is insane. Like if we were doing this anywhere else in the world, we would get so much support. So we, we paid so far like 25 million euros in taxes. We get 3 million from the government. Um, yeah, and we, invest, we hired a, a thousand people. In, yeah, I was going to say, you must, you've changed, you've surely changed the country, the economic we are just about to country. do that, I think. Uh, I mean, we, we have attracted most investment in, in the country. More than all the startups in our first years, we attracted more than all of the other startups in Croatia combined. I can tell you're really passionate about keeping it Croatian-centric. Yeah. You I think know, in the, the end, you the know... The whole campus idea is actually, it's worker welfare, isn't it? It's building a, your own little world. It will have so many effects on the society here. And, you know, when there's foreign visitors uh, that come to, the, to visit the Croatian government. They bring them here already now in this shabby ex Peugeot dealership. <laughs> uh, and you know, once the campus is built, this will be really something world class. So it will attract, I think, lots of attention. Plus yeah. we have some very big plans that we'll see later in the year or beginning of next year in terms of autonomous driving, um, where we will have a big, big pilot project in Zagreb in Croatia. Um, Bloody hell, Marte, look at it. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted always an M3 uh, E30, always. Yeah. And now I'm finally in the position to do it after so many years. And I decided to buy one and I said, what the hell, let's buy the best one, which is the Evo 3. Evo 3. Yeah. And it looks flawless. And I will use it. It will not stay in this, in this state. Actually, I'm pretty good at using cars to the limit without damaging them. Uh, Croatia is still a very liberal country when it comes to uh, roads uh, and, and, and you know speeds. Yeah, so so you just wouldn't believe how I drive that car. Uh, uh, of, of course, road legal and everything, <laughs> <laughs> not breaking any laws. Is, uh, this, is this from Croatia or was no, this imported? No, no, from Belgium. Belgium. This is from Belgium. It was the only one in Europe. Oh my gosh, it smells so 80s. <laughs> Well, you forget how quite small yeah, the yeah, E30 yeah. is when they're next to us. But the reality is these cars are so slow when you drive them now, yeah. especially for me after the C2 and stuff like that. But 1990. Yeah. So this was always a dream car. This for was you. always a dream you, for you've, me. You've still got the, the electric green uh, BMW, but it's in pieces. Is this true? A guy crashed it, <laughs> an employee, seven years ago. Yeah. And every year I put a list of things I want to do this for that year, like a bucket list. Yeah. And it's always on the top of the list and I never do it. But you will, you will do it. The thing is, it, I don't want to rebuild it because the point of that car was never to be original. The point of that car was to test a new technology. So it was a, it was a, progr it was a test bed? It was a test bed. So I want to put the newest stuff in it, like C2 powertrain. Yeah. But you've got some powertrain <laughs> thinking about, I'm sure. Yeah, you make your own motors. Guys are so busy and stuff like that. So, I want to do it, yeah, soon. Look at that. How do you say mint, it right? Is, it is mint. This car is mint. So you know, my, my grandfather um, was so looking after cars. If you would slam the door on his car, he would go ballistic. <laughs> and you know, it was always kept perfectly and he would only use it to go to church and stuff like that. Yeah. And then he died and his car was perfect. You have one life. Yeah. Like, what? I don't care if this car has a few, you know, imperfections. Yeah. You're not going to destroy it. No, no, no I'm not you, going to be a hooligan you're, with you're it. You're going to be mechanically, I, I get you as a, a mechanically sympathetic person. Absolutely. Are you, is Rimac going to build, I mean, I know you, you're building these. Are, are you going to build like a, an affordable, mass produced, let's say city car? Not in the way you think. Okay. That's also something that Croatians don't like about us. Why are we doing things that are just for rich guys. For like, rich people. What does the Croatian have of it? Well, you know, what does the uh, Italian have of Ferrari? <laughs> they have very good uh, benefit to their economy and good jobs. I think, you know, looking at the data, uh, you know, 1.3 million people dying every year. Uh, huge amount of emissions, inefficiencies, inefficiency of road usage, uh, just this noise pollution, cars littering streets, cars being everywhere, or taking all the space in cities. It's really bad. So I think there's a much better thing to do. And that's a little hint of something that you'll see coming from us. Okay. Whose cars do you like? I appreciate Tesla for the technical solutions and the way they did it. Then I think the Taycan is great. 
the Taycan is a really good car. We have one, one in the company where everybody in the company can drive it. Um, it's really beautiful to drive. It, yeah. It's like on rails when you drive 270, that's the top speed. It's like no vibration, no jiggling. It's just absolutely straight. Yeah. Uh, very nice interior, beautiful car. That's it. I think the Lucid Air will be an amazing car. So uh, there are some upcoming EVs that will be really good that we are also working on. Um, I think that Mercedes has done a great uh, battery uh, architecture with their new uh, hybrid uh, lineup. Um, so yeah, s some good things coming, but most of them, oh, Hyundai's are really good. Hmm. Uh, so the new EV6 Kia, it's amazing for that kind of price, what it, they're yeah. doing, amazing. I can't, still can't believe you've brought it here for this for this video and you actually haven't driven it yet no oh my god i'd be, I'd be it would be doing my head in. i'd be like I'm, i don't want to talk to you i'm getting in and i'm going yeah it just got the plates and the plates are really cool the pl uh, i've noticed the plates the yeah. personal plates that's the great thing about croatia people you all have to come to live here this costs like 200 euros to do you Is can put anything on on your car i think as long as it's eight characters um, you, you can put it, it's like a few hundred euros and yeah. you have it for five years. And you know, this has the 2.5 engine. It's not the 2.3. The only thing I don't like about this particular car, I would have preferred this checkered um, seat uh, with the fabric instead oh, of know. the leather. Like this is the original leather, but you know. Man, listen, you, just keep doing what you do. Maybe you can buy another one, buy the sister car to it, buy a, a white one with the checkered interior. I, I was so. actually thinking that to to buy one which is like a normal M3, uh, just to not destroy this one by, you know, using it too much. Yeah. But I don't have a garage actually. I have a garage where one car fits, so. Is I that why we've done this here? Because yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you actually don't have a garage. I have a garage for one car. I need to build a garage with a living room inside, and that's when, it. <laughs> when you have the Rimac campus, you maybe can just bit of space on the side for your Presumably, you're going to be living near the campus. Yeah, but th that will be there will be a museum actually, where we will have uh, all the cars with our components. Actually, what I have on my bucket list, I want to have all the cars that have our systems in them. Like, but that's that's you, going to what be. you want to buy them. Yeah. Whoa, expensive Koenigsegg. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, the uh, Aston Martin Valkyrie, Koenigsegg Regera, Pininfarina Battista. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's already 10 million euros there. I was just about to say, <laughs> bloody hell, man. You, sh you, you should have got it started at something a little bit cheaper. Christian Koenigsegg, is, is he like a hero of yours? Absolutely. So two of my heroes before I started were um, Horacio Pagani, Christian Koenigsegg. Yeah. And of course, Nikola Tesla. And I went for a factory tour in Pagani. When I started, I had like drawings of the Concept One, which Adriano did, our director of design today and showed him uh, the pictures um, and then I realized he doesn't speak English you know at that time it, it, again you know thinking back 10 years ago there was no YouTube videos of, of Christian Koenigsegg and Horacio Pagani I yeah. couldn't have known that he doesn't speak English uh, I took the whole team we were like four or five people we, we went all together in one car to F see Pagani five people yeah in one car we, we, the whole company fit in one car and I showed him what I was doing his assistant at that time was Croatian so I could write her emails and he would respond back in Italian and so on. So we still, Horatio and I have a chat on WhatsApp where he writes in Italian and I Google Translate. I, I write in English, Google Translate back. Really? <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you are in touch with him? Oh yeah, he was here as well. And uh, okay. I still have huge admiration for him. Well, has there been another Croatian car? No, never. There has been some attempts, okay. um, but none that may, made it to the market. There was okay. one like at the same time when I was starting, there, uh, there was a company here, a really good company called Docking, who wanted to make a, a small car. It looked like something like Smart, um, but they couldn't get the funding to do it, uh, so it stopped. Right. What do you spend your own money on? When Porsche invested, it was the first time I could breathe a little bit. So that is when I rented a house, I bought the Z4, because I wanted finally to have a car that I can drift. I, didn't, I, I had just a company car, which was an Audi, old Audi A8. And I bought a Ducati and I thought like, finally now I have a little bit of calm and I can work a little bit less and enjoy more. The Ducati has 20 kilometers on it. I drove it from the dealership to my house and once to the company, that's it. The BMW, I didn't drive it for two uh, years and I had to gather lots of friends 
to clean them and to bring all of these cars here. For this? For this today. You haven't got an expensive lifestyle. I'm in the company day and night. But it's okay, I've chosen this lifestyle. It, I, you know, be careful what you wish for, it might come true. The, Z, the Z4M Coupe, which is cool. I do like those. Beautiful car. And then the third BMW, you say this is your daily driver? This is my daily driver. This is the only car I really drive. You don't drive an electric car every day? No. I drive the C2 a lot and now when they go into production, I will drive one, like there will be a car that I can use. Since I'm not the majority shareholder of the company or, or not the only shareholder, whatever, like when I buy a bike, I have to pay for it. It's not like I get stuff for free. So I can use the prototypes, but if I want a car for me, I have to buy Is that true? So hang on, that car there, which is a development yeah. car, it's not yours? No. And you don't own a C2, you don't? I don't own a Concept 1 as well. You don't own a Concept 1? No. So you don't own any of the cars that your company built? Because they are 2 million euros. Yeah, well, I know that. <laughs> I know that. That's why I don't own one. You don't presume that you're going to get given one as part of your deal? No. I, I never look. I always put the company first. I never look at my own personal interest. And all the employees will, will tell you that they know that I, I never cared. You know, I mean, it took me 10 years to afford to buy a Z4. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you tell me about the Richard Hammond crash? The Richard Hammond crash, crash was really tough for us. We were in the worst situation in our company because we had another fraud investor, and, and that's my fault. Like, it's, it's not like the fault of these people. It's my fault because I trusted them. I thought like the company is going to die if in three months we, we don't get money and we, were, like, we, we couldn't get another investor because of this guy for, for like 12 months. And it was like barely, barely, barely surviving from month to month and uh, like being late for a few days with salaries a few times, being late to suppliers. So a terrible, terrible, terrible time. And I thought like all our employees will run away because I told them very transparently what the situation was. In the middle of that, uh, Grand Tour reached out to us. They want to test this concept one. And we were in the company and like, no, we don't want to do that. Like if something goes wrong, like in this situation, it will kill us. You know, we cannot say no to the guys. And you're like, okay, what's the worst thing that can happen? Actually, the car was really good. So they were testing for five days. Everything worked, like it blew them away in terms of like acceleration and everything. Um, everything fine. And you know, it has live telemetry. So I'm looking at it all the time, looking at the screens, what's happening. <laughs> we have a team there. Last day, hill climb. Uh, they do the hill climbs and our guys call us, everything fine. I'd look at the data. And every time they go for a run, I see a little bit of data arriving and then nothing. And then there is data dump like 30 minutes later. So what happens, there is no signal uh, in that area once they start uh, driving. Our guy in Switzerland calls us and he says like, oh, everything went fine. They finished the testing. That's it. They're packing up. Done. And we were like, great. After um, five days, everything went perfect. Car performed well. Great. And then one hour later, he calls me, the car crashed, it burns, he's alive. And I was like, I thought you'd finished. Like these words, I couldn't comprehend that our car burns. And, and there were these guys around me, the, our engineers, and they told me later, I just went pale and went into the car and went home. I didn't tell them anything. I was just shocked. And from the moment when I sit in the car until I arrived home half an hour later, it was in all global media. And I called Marta to ask her, Marta, is the car insured? Because that was a customer car that we were supposed to deliver, that we were supposed to get money for. Oh, gosh. And was, was the car insured? And we need, really needed the money, really needed the money. Yeah. Um, and she was like, oh, let me check. And all she had was an email where she asked the Grand Tour lady, like, is there insurance? And she said, yes, that was it. Like, no contract, nothing. It was front page news in Croatia for days, speculating, did our car almost kill Richard Hammond, did the brakes break, what, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I couldn't say anything because we needed the money from the insurance. Two or three weeks later, uh, Richard and I sit down like this and we did the, the interview where you know, we explained the situation, what happened. On that last corner, he went first 144 kilometers per hour, then he did like 150, 154, then 157, 160, and the last time he went through the corner where he went off was 212. 212? 212. He was trying to see his time on the, on the clock. 
Oh. And with a 1,000 horsepower EV hypercar, when you try to see the time after the finish line and you stay on the, on the throttle for too long and then you look at the road and you realize it's too late for, to There's brake, no road. That's what happened. But was it positive PR in any way? In the end. In when the you end. Look back, right. Yes. Because the car was safe in so much as many it had a massive crash and it didn't. Many people say it's the best thing that happened to us. Yes, now that everything is fine. But it was so close to kill the company, so close. Other cars that you've owned, apart from these? I had an M6 for some time, yeah. E64, which was an amazing car with a V10. Yeah. I definitely want to build an E30 with a V10 one day. One of them with a V10? Yeah. Sleeper? In an in M3 body. OK, OK. Yeah. But definitely, that, that's something I like. I love the V10 engine. That, yeah. That's the best one. When I was buying this car, I was thinking between the new A8 and this. I know they were not very similar, but yeah. I, want, I had to buy one car, and I was thinking you know, more travel or more sports, so I yeah. decided for this. Yeah. And I was really disappointed with the new A8 when I had it as a, as a um, uh, rental car. And uh, the old one was really amazing. Um, That's good, because the older ones are cheaper. Yeah. yeah. I like it when the older cars are better. And I suppose you're at the technical forefront. You want to experience what a good standard of technology is in a car. Sometimes it's so small things that you wouldn't imagine. Yeah. Like when you, when you uh, lock the car, for how long are the lights still turned on? How do they make you choose if the lights t stay turned on or not? Yeah. Those kind of things, you know, that are just like, how did others think about that? Yeah. You need to have cars. And I actually want to build, this is a big dream of mine. I want to build up a fleet of cars uh, that our employees can use. We already have like a Tesla, uh, Porsche Taycan, and uh, some other cars which we are now buying, but I want to have like, you know, M3s, 911s, uh, um, and like Teslas, and I don't know, Lucid one day, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. because most of the employees didn't have the chance to experience a 911 or, or, or a car like that. Yeah. And guys that are making this should understand yeah. those cars. Yes. What's next, apart from a C2? I was recently driving uh, the Ferrari SF90, great car, everything fine. But after the C2, I realized that it doesn't make sense for me to buy modern uh, sports cars. What, a piston sports car? or, a, or any, just any? any sports car, it doesn't give me a thrill in terms of performance like the C2. What, because that you can get in one of those any day of the week if you wish. You've got that unbelievable performance. Yeah. Everything else is going to feel disappointing. Exactly. Yeah. So. I want to buy maybe more um, cars that are emotionally interesting for me. Yeah. So for example, um, I think a Carrera GT okay. is something that's amazing. An air-cooled 911. Oh yeah. Like a 993 yes. turbo. Oh, I'd, lo I'd love an air-cooled 911. It's one yeah. of my, uh, it's cliche, but. Want some cars that I know are bad and I don't care. Yeah. As well because of when I was 18, like a Mercedes SLR. Yeah. I knew some people who worked on it, and I know that the cars are not good. Yeah. Or, or some things on the car are flawed from the engineering side. Yes. But I don't care. They are very special. It's an SLR. It's an SLR. Yeah. I want a Beetle, a Cabrio, an yeah. old one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. I've still got my first car, my Beetle. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. I think you, you showed something that you restored it. Or well, I've recommissioned it. Yeah. It still needs fully restoring, but it's... It's, an, it's a very emotional car, though. Like, my dream, personally, is to have a huge garage, beautiful garage, like many Koshbin style, yeah. uh, with, with a bunch of cars in there. And, like, sometimes just, you know, put a chair between them and look at them. When you know everything about the car, and that's my problem when I drive it, I, I, I know every decision we made, why we made it like this, and all the things that have potential issues or yeah. can be improved. So when yeah. I drive it, I just look at the data and listen to everything and try to feel everything. Yeah. I don't really enjoy driving it. It's just about... Your analysis. Yeah, it's yeah. absorbing. It's very unlikely. I did not expect you to have this. Did not, I couldn't have predicted the vehicles <laughs> that, yeah. you, that you were going to have, Marty. So I really appreciate that, that. And I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Thanks ever so much for watching The Late Break Show. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Marte, thank you. Thank you, Jen. Cheers.